Hi, I'm Adam Culp and you're at BeachCast. Today, I'm gonna to help you with conference talk preparation in eight simple steps. So stick around and we'll get right on that. Welcome back. If you want to grow as a developer and learn how to make better web applications, start now by subscribing to BeachCast and make sure to click the bell notification so you won't miss anything. And if you found this video helpful or if you have questions, please leave a comment down below. Also, please remember to like the video by clicking the thumbs up button. Thank you. As I said, today we're going to be talking about conference talk preparation, and I'm going to share eight steps that I typically follow when it comes to talk preparation. Now, some of you might be saying, Adam, that has, what does that have to do with programming? Why would I be concerned with talk preparation? Well, the thing is, is many developers in their career, they like to help. They like to share with other people the knowledge that they have. So for, for many of them, the next iteration in their career is to do some public speaking to help people, whether it's speaking at a user group or maybe speaking at a conference, uh, maybe even creating videos like I'm creating here with BeachCast. There are many different reasons, but many people find it as something that they would like to do. So I get asked quite often, how do I create talks? How do I get started in this? Uh, as some of you may know, I organize the local user group in South Florida. I also run a PHP conference in Miami in February each year. And as part of that, I'm looking at talk uh, titles and abstracts and selecting talks as part of the talk selection committee for Sunshine PHP. I've also done it for other larger conferences like ZenCon and some others. So I spend a lot of time looking at talks. I spend a lot of time selecting talks that I think the audience would really like to see when they attend these conferences and or user groups. So I thought I would share some insight into what I do personally. Now, I'm not saying that what I'm about to share is the only way to do things. Your mileage may vary. You might choose doing things entirely different than I do. I'm gonna share these eight steps that I typically follow. And so far they've worked pretty well for me. I speak at about 10 conferences a year. I organize the local user group and I speak quite often there. And these are the things that I follow almost every single time I create a BeachCast episode as well. So the first thing is when you're getting ready to submit your talks, oftentimes for conferences, there's a call for papers process and you have to submit your titles, your abstracts, and maybe some other information uh, in relation to your talk prior to the conference selecting you. So the first thing you'll need to, to create is your talk title. Once you know what you would like to speak about, you need to create a good title. Now, as a good title, you wanna make sure that it's catchy. You wanna make sure that it's simple, but not too boring. You want it to grab people's attention and draw them in so that they will read the abstract to find out if it's a talk that they really want to go listen to. Also, something else that I like to do in my titles is I like to use words that will draw people in, like words like surprising or top 10 things or vital five practices, things like that. Uh, that lead people in uh, using the word exclusive. I'm going to share with you an exclusive list of how people do this. Using words like that, it draws people in and keep it nice and simple. Uh, you don't want your you want, don't want your title to be a, a full sentence. You want your title to be just a paraphrase of what the talk is going to be about and draw them in. Once you've got the title created, the number two thing that you're going to do is create the abstract. Some conferences, they want an abstract to be very big, right? Multiple paragraphs, in some cases, maybe even entire paper. However, most conferences want it to be short because they not only do they want to use your abstract to select your talk, they also want to put your abstract in their schedule so attendees can read it and find out what the talk is about. So the, so you generally want to keep that kind of short, maybe 400 characters at most. The structure that I like to follow is like this. First, I put one sentence 
as just a general introduction to break ground on whatever the topic is. After I've done that, then I do two to three more sentences defining a problem. Uh, I generally don't ask questions. You don't want to ask questions of people reading your abstract. I, I see so many speakers making this mistake to ask questions or pose questions within their abstract. And, and I get it. It, you want them to look inside. You want them to ask this question internally and you want it to draw them in. But please don't do it in an abstract. It's very rare that a question will help an abstract catch people's attention. So try to stay away from questions unless it's vital that you use a question in your abstract. My goal in those two to three sentences is for the reader to say, you know what, I know that problem or I have that problem. That's the goal of those two or three sentences. You want to clearly define the problem and you want to draw the user into, uh, in, into associating with that problem. Now, after you've created the problem, the next thing you want to do is put one to two sentences of how you're going to help them solve the problem, right? I'm going to share the list of these things that will help you solve the problem. I'm going to show you practices that will do it for you. So you want to, you want to include in, in one or two sentences how that problem is going to be solved through the talk. And then you want to give one sentence at the very end of what is going to be the takeaway. Are they going to leave with sample code? Are they going to leave with knowledge of best practices? Are they going to leave with resources that they'll be able to draw on to help them solve that problem? So there you have it. There's one sentence for intro, two to three sentences defining the problem, one to two sentences of how you're going to solve the problem, and one sentence with what they're going to take away with them. That is one paragraph. It's a good, clear, concise way to build an abstract. In, your, in these sentences that I just outlined, some of the things that you'll want to do is make sure you include some good power words, right? You want to use words like amazing, powerful, awesome, you want to create these sentences in such a way that it leads the reader to be emotional, to have some sort of emotional reaction to the content, hopefully in a positive manner, and draw them to want to attend and listen to you speak. After I finish building my abstract, I read it and I ask myself, would I sit in a seat and listen to me talk about whatever this abstract says for 40 to 60 minutes. If I can answer yes, then my abstract is done. If I can't answer definitively yes, then I need to keep working on my abstract until I get it to that point. So the next thing we do is our number three, and number three, we want to create our outline. The outline is the bulleted list of all the points that we want to cover during the talk. Keep it very simple. Don't get too granular. That comes later. We're going to get more granular later. But right now in step three, it is just a high level outline. After you have that outline, then you go to a whiteboard or something like that. And using the whiteboard, then you lay out all those items that you created in your bullet points and you start to arrange them. You draw arrows from one to the next and decide what order you're going to present these different bullet points. You might not have a whiteboard and that's perfectly fine. Do it on paper, do it on your screen, however you want to do it, even if you want to use your outline to do it. Now, after we've got to that point, the number four item on the list is creating the slides. First, we have the base step of creating the slides and then we come in and we add more details. So in this first stage, all I want to do is transfer items from the whiteboard where I was creating the organization it straight into the slide. So the slides are very simple, no detail, not a bunch of bullet points at this, at this stage, just an individual slide for each one of those points. Now, as part of my base slides, not only do I include those bullet points, but I do include a couple important slides along with that. The first slide, should always be your title slide. That is just the title of your talk, maybe your Twitter handle, something like that. And the reason you want that is because while prior to delivering the talk, you're going to be standing up by the podium in the front of the room as people are starting to fill the seats. 
and you want them to see the title of the talk as they're walking in. They're going to know clearly who they are getting ready to see and what they are getting ready to hear. Then the next thing you want to have at some point in your talk, whether it's the beginning or the end. Now, I prefer at the beginning a vanity slide. The reason for a vanity slide is to help create identity with the people who are getting ready to hear you speak. I do a couple different things. First, I, I let them know who I am. I tell them some things that I that are relevant to this topic of how I relate to that. I also in my vanity slide put some little personal details that it creates some identity. For instance, I, I might talk about how I'm a long distance runner. I might talk about how I know judo. I might talk about, you know, something simple, but yet personal that creates that relationship between you and your attendees. Then of course, you're going to have a slide for each one of the points in your outline from earlier. And you'll want to make sure that each one of these slides are very simplistic at this point. Okay, so we've created our base slides. The next thing we want to do is we want to include some more detail in our slides. Maybe we want to put uh, sub bullet points on each of the slides. The one thing to keep in, tr in mind is do not put too much text. I see many, many speakers make the mistake of putting too much content on their slides, paragraphs of information on their slides. You shouldn't be displaying the paragraph of text. You should be saying the paragraph of text. They're here to hear you speak, not to read the slides. And another point on that note is if they're reading your slides, chances are they're not listening to you and you want them to listen to you. You want them to hear what you're sharing. So you don't want to put too much information on the slides. Otherwise, you're distracting them from you. You're distracting them from the talk that you're giving. As you're listing bullet points, I oftentimes I'll put a header on each of those slides uh, covering the high level, and then I'll put some sub items under that in kind of an outline fashion. I don't reveal all those at once. I don't simply go to the next slide and it's got nine points on it. I go to the next slide, uh, but what I do is I reveal those points one at a time. Now, by the time I get to the ninth point, I've got a slide with nine points on it, but I revealed it one at a time so that way people were not reading ahead. They were concentrating on what I was saying versus what was being displayed on the slide. So after we've got the slides done, then we're on to number five. And number five is practice. I recommend that you practice out loud in your office, in your home, wherever you're practicing, do it out loud. Say the words out loud, because what you'll find is that you stumble. And that's a good thing, because if you stumble, it means that you might need to change your slides somehow. It means you might need to change the point that you're trying to purvey. As you say things, maybe it won't make sense to you. You'll be like, why did I, why am I saying that? Why did I include that bullet point? So you'll tweak your slides and you'll tweak what you're getting ready to say. If you do it silently and in your mind, it's not going to come across the same. You're not going to get the same impact. Now, after you do it out loud, then you want to make sure that you're practicing in front of somebody as well. Now, if you were able to practice in front of somebody, you'll want to ask them for their feedback. Hey, how do you think I did? Do you think I should tweak anything? And hopefully they give you good, honest feedback that leads you to make a much better talk. The next practice that we want to do is in front of a group of people. Now, I often recommend that prior to speaking at a conference, you should always deliver your talk at a user group. One, it helps the user group because they always need more people to talk. And it means that you're going to be practicing in front of a group of people, which is much different than practicing alone, much different than practicing in front of one person. Practicing in front of a group is going to give you a whole new dynamic because you're going to see how different people with different beliefs react to your talk. You're going to see facial expressions. You're going to see smiles. You're going to see heads nodding for the people who got it. You're going to see, you're going to have questions that come up, whether it's during or after the talk. And that is really super useful. So you want to make sure that you practice in front of a group. And hopefully you have a local user group somewhere near you where you can do this because it really makes a big difference. Number six is adjust your talk, adjust your slides, adjust everything. You might find that when you practiced in front of a group in number five, 
they asked questions and it made you want to change your slides so that you could answer some of those questions ahead of time instead of leaving people wonder about certain things until the end of your talk. So you'll want to adjust your slides, adjust, ad possibly adjust the talk content in number six. And then of course, number seven is where we're finally ready. We've practiced, we've ready, and now we're delivering the talk at a conference. First off, go to your, go to your, the room that you're going to be in ahead of time. Now, I don't mean two minutes ahead of time. I mean, 15 minutes ahead of time, or maybe even earlier in the day. If your talk's in the afternoon, try to get in that room sometime in the morning, connect up your laptop, make sure everything's working correctly, the pro make sure the projector is going to work well with your laptop and that you've got the correct dongles and connectors and everything that you need in order to do the presentation. Uh, that way you have time to recover. You have time to borrow something from somebody else if you need to. Now, number eight is after the conference is done. After the talk has been delivered, after the conference, you'll want to read the feedback. Be careful here. A lot of times you might end up with the troll who can be very nasty, who can be very mean. So you don't want to take that too much to heart. But you do want to read the feedback, the good uh, constructive feedback, and see how you can tweak your talk for next time. So take the feedback and adjust your talk accordingly. Now, at this point, you're done. Congratulations, you're now a conference speaker. So rinse and repeat, submit to more CFPs, go out and talk and speak at more conferences or user groups. Many people, uh, decide not to speak at a conference ever again, and they just speak at user groups. And there is nothing wrong with that. Speaking at a user group can be highly rewarding. I love speaking at user groups. So I hope you found this useful. I hope this information was helpful for you. If you found it helpful, please like the video down below and consider subscribing to Beachcast so you'll know when future episodes come out. I thank you very much for being here. Take care.